top 10 breakout hurling stars to watch in 2024. This is always a fun list to do, especially after the last one. I'm fairly confident in the 10 that we have selected. We will give shout outs to the people that nearly made the list but didn't, obviously, later on in the list. And to specify the criteria again, these are players that we expect could have a big impact on the championship in 2024. Players that could shape how the championship plays out. So with that in mind, we're going to start with our number 10 on this list, Sean Rin from Clare. His position is defence or midfield, a very versatile hurler, and he's someone that's definitely caught your eye, Luke. Yeah, big time. And I think that, like from all the talk within A versus B matches last year, that I think he was brought into the panel fully after the Munster final, and he was tearing up trees by all accounts. He had a really good season with the under twenties last year. In uh, like uh, last year with Clare, he was the star player on that team as well. I'd probably argue, and uh, yeah, I just think I think with with coming into the year. Uh, Tony Kelly out injured anyway for the league. Definitely, he'll be strug- he'll be kind of under pressure to get back from championship. Ryan Taylor is going to be in serious, uh, have serious issues coming back from championship too. I think like the need badly need players around midfield, and I think Sean Rin is the uh, is the obvious standout player in there as well. And uh, yeah, I think I think he's a great chance of uh, if not starting for Clare come championship, but being the the first choice sub in that kind of area. Yeah, no, I definitely give him a great chance as well, especially because injuries can change everything. I mean, and Claire do give out these chances. Brian Lohan definitely does. I mean, look at Adam Hogan. He got his chance last year. He grabbed it with both hands. So it'll be interesting to see if Rin can do that. And he's not the last Claire player on this list. We'll discuss more Claire players in just a second, but we're going to talk about our number nine on the list. He is from the capital, County Dublin, Nave Barogman, Sean Gallagher. Now, he played in defence for Dublin in the Diorolite Walsh Cup. He really, really impressed me. I was covering the game with uh, Dublin against Westmead and Sean Gallagher hits three or four points on the half-back line. Very, very impressive. Like, very dominant in the air as well. And, like, when you look at the Dublin half-back line, you know, players like Liam Rush stepping away. Is there a spot there for Gallagher? And do you think he can grab it in 2024? Yeah, I definitely look. I definitely think so. I think that, like, I know with, with the under twenties, he had a great, great year last year too. And I think he played as a defensive midfielder for that twenty side and was probably the key player on that twenties team last year alongside Paddy Doyle. And uh, I know after the the Dublin campaign, he was drafted straight in by Michal Dunahoo to play in the in house games and everything, and really stood out there too. And like, what a start in the in the Walsh Cup as well. I know it is on very early in the season. Like his again, potential is, is 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 pretty incredible. And for a young player to have that size and to be dominant physically already, it's a big, big advantage. When you have the skill levels and you have the size in there too, I see no reason why he can't uh, if not try force into a starting position for Dublin, but other than that, be like a be a really good squad player that can really contribute off the bench as well. Yeah, no, I definitely think look, it's written all over him that he's going to be a prominent figure in Dublin's championship campaign in 2024 anyway whether he is starting or whether he is coming off the bench because he was very impressive in that opening Walsh Cup fixture against Westmeath Dublin play against Antrim in the Walsh Cup semi-final next weekend that will be an interesting one to keep an eye on to see how prominently he features in that game as well now I did say that we are going to discuss more Clare players it isn't Shane Meehan massive shout out to him I think he's a forward with huge potential it is instead John Keneally from County Clare. His position is defence as well. And when you consider last year, players like Connor Cleary, when he got injured, like the damage that Aaron Galan was able to do on a full-back line without Connor Cleary, John Conlon as well, he looked like he might get injured. That was a massive worry for Clare when he looked like he probably did get injured against Dublin. John Keneally is another really, really strong defender. And for Clare, they need backup in these positions going into 2024 could John Keneally be that man? Yeah, look, I I actually think this is a pretty safe one. That I think I think I think it's pretty certain that he's gonna be gonna be involved. And like like you said, I think Clare fans will tell would will tell you this that they were massively underprepared for Conor Cleary's injury. That Conor Cleary played every single game in the National League last year, started all of them. They didn't have any backup for fullback. And I think although Keneally's best position is probably centre half back. 
I'd say that there's a good chance that he'll play a good few league games in fullback. He offers versatility. He can play in the corner, can play fullback, can play anywhere in the halfback line. You can pick him for any single position in defence. And yeah, look, they probably have a pretty settled um, uh, defence after last year as well. But I, I think straight away he can come in and be the first choice in there as well. I think I'd expect him to play, if not all, but like most of the league games, I'd expect him to start in most of them. And uh, yeah, look, again, we're talking about injuries. There's no way you can't get through the Munster, uh, the Munster, the four games in Munster without picking up injuries. There's just no chance that you get through it in there as well. We saw what happened last year. And look, I think he might start the season as the seventh defend, seventh choice defender, maybe for Clare and picks up one or two injuries. I think he could play a serious amount of game time this year as well, particularly though I'd fully expect him to play an awful lot of league games. And again, like John Collins getting on, Connor Cleary's getting on. I, like we talked about earlier about Theo Clancy being a definite figure in the cent- central of defence for Dublin. I think John Connee is a certainty for uh, in the future for Clare in, one of the, in either three or six. Yeah, no, I do agree with you. I've been impressed by him as well. I think if Cleary or Conlon gets injured this year, I think Clare probably be better prepared for it than they were this time last year. Obviously, no more conceding 111 to Aaron Galan in the Munster final anymore. Now, moving on from Clare to County Wexford, and we've highlighted one Wexford player from the extraordinary under-20 Wexford side. That is Keen Byrne. He's a forward from County Wexford, and Wexford do need more forwards. Over the last years, they've been extremely reliant on three. Rory O'Connor... Connor McDonald and Lee Chin. If he, he, any of them are out injured or aren't firing, the Wexford forward line does struggle. Keen Byrne, can he be the man to help figure out this issue? Yeah, absolutely. And again, this is not a like if but when situation too. And that, like you look at last year, that I'd say himself and Adam Screeny were the two corner forwards that lit up the uh, lit up the under twenty championship. And like, I think it was for his sake, it was unfortunate that like. Like that, if uh, that awfully were the ones that progress because Keen Burn was having equally as good a season and he's deadly active from freeze, can score from play, contribute there too. When it comes to skill levels, he's just, uh, yeah, no, he's 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 a really, really good player and just like it's a certainty that he's going to make it. His question, like, we'll probably have this, we'll have the same discussion literally in a minute is that he does need to, to beef up a little bit more, but when it comes to natural skill levels, he's absolutely, uh, He's there, thereabouts. He's he's already involved in Wexford as well. We'll see how much action he gets in the Walsh Cup in the league coming up as well. I know he already he's already played the in-house games for the Wexford too. I know the roster has got him in already. So uh, look, when it comes to talent, I think it's he's just too good to not include in this as well. There is the question in your first year coming out of under twenty if you're going to make it or not. But like he'll absolutely be on the squad. He'll be definitely going to match panels every single week. And look, he's going to be a future star for the next ten years minimum. Yeah, no, I agree. I've been very, very impressed with him. And you mentioned about, you know, under 20 stars. We're moving on to one of the most talked about talents to come out of the under 20s that I think I've seen in a very, very long time. Because it is a proud, proud hurling county that has had a difficult five or six years. And I think we all know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Adam Screeny from Offaly. Now, Kilcoma Kalahi, he was very prominent for them in the club championship. His position is at corner forward, but he moves around a lot. This guy is a superstar already and could be an even bigger superstar in the future. Yeah, look, I think, I think like maybe people will say, like, because he's the most recognizable name on the list for sure, that why maybe he could be higher, but might be a year too soon from the thing. I know, I've no doubt that awfully you're going to use him. They're definitely going to use him. And I think as it goes on, he'll be playing. He'll definitely be playing for Offaly as it goes on. I think he definitely needs a bit more. And we talked about Keen Byrne needing maybe a little bit more uh, uh, to grow a little bit more. Well, like Keen Byrne's miles ahead of where Adam Screeny is when it comes to physically. So uh, yeah, no, there's definitely challenges in there ahead of him as well. But like, I think this guy's the most talented underage player that we've we've seen. I can't think back to a fellow more talented than him as well. Even in the All Ireland final last year against Cork, where he was being manhandled and being thrown around, he still had a really really good performance that day too. And look, he was the best underage player at underage at under twenty level last year. Like he was probably the player of the year, although he didn't win it. Like he probably was the one that excited the most people as well. I think. 
I think it's it's good to include him at this mark because it's like he he deserves recognition going forward as well. But I would say some of those other players in the Offaly team will probably bed down positions in the starting 15 for Offaly before him. Like I think Dan Ravenhill is built uh his his build kind of sets him up better for the team. I think Sam Burke as well, he's a good chance of starting and Brecken Cavanagh maybe might I think those three lads might get in the team ahead of him year one, but I think Screeny like Screeny's the one with the with the most talent out of them all and he's the one that's gonna excite people the most. And like yeah, I just I can't wait to see when he becomes a, a regular factor and when Offley get back up to Lee McCarthy is they're inevitably gonna do him being a being a factor in the competition. Well, that's it, like, is that he is an entertainer. And, like, there's nothing better than the type of player that gets on the ball and everybody in the stadium perks up to see what they're going to do. And Adam Screeny is that type of player. And I'm buzzing to see how he gets on in the Offaly jersey over the next few years. Like, I think they do need to protect him a little bit. Don't put the entire county on his back immediately. He is still a guy who's, what, only 18, 19? Like, let him grow into the team. Let him grow into the role because this guy is a superstar in the future. Now, we're going to move on to the Dacia, County Waterford. And when we were mentioning on, on the football side about how Tyrone have had a pretty bleak off-season, Waterford have had a pretty bleak off-season as well. Austin Gleeson stepping away from the panel. Connor Gleeson isn't playing this year. Shane McNulty isn't playing this year. Like, a lot of big players stepping away. They need, you know, lads in there to galvanise the team. Our number five is a lad who could definitely do that. It's Porig Fitzgerald from Waterford. He's a forward. He has been very, very impressive last season for Waterford. Has a lot of potential. This guy could be one of the shining lights for them in 24. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. And like he got a season last year to get used to. He had a he had a, he had a pretty good first year on the panel, I would say that like he made his championship debut. Like it was only two, I think he had two sub appearances and he played a good bit of national league hur hurling as well. So he got a year to get used to inter-county hurling. He knows what the level is required now. He got a year to bulk up too. And look, he started 2024, like a train. That's the thing. It's like they played two games now. They played Kerry and they played Tipperary winning boat Waterford and Paul Fitzgerald was man the match in boat. He's hit, he hit, I think he was a hit one eleven in the first game. And he's after hitting 10 points in the last game as well. And, that's not just off and freeze too. He's hitting from he's he's scoring from play as well there too. And uh, like in a forward line where Waterford have had Patrick Curran, Mikey Kiley, Jack Prendergast in those first two games, Paul Fitzgerald's been the one that looks the uh, looks the absolute star in there too. So like there's been no doubt of his potential. He racks up huge tallies at club level. Really good underage career as well. I think look, I think it's a no brainer that I, if he. Uh, like he was already made, getting minutes last year too. I think he's a great chance of starting this year. And uh, yeah, with the form he's in at the moment, I don't see like if he maintains this, I don't see how Davey cannot pick him. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Especially with the players that are missing. You know, no Austin Gleeson this year. There are going to be openings in that Waterford team. And I feel like Park Fitzgerald is an obvious choice to throw in because he's absolutely shown brilliance in the preseason competitions and everything like that. He's an obvious choice. Now, moving from a forward to a defender and moving from Waterford to the Cats of Kilkenny, Niall Rowe. He is an absolutely outstanding defender. And Kilkenny have chopped and changed when it comes to their other cornerback. They've been fairly happy with Mikey Butler and Hugh Lawler, but they've rotated a lot in the other corner. Could Niall Rowe be the one to get that position on lockdown? Yeah, I think so. I think, look, Tommy Walsh has been there or thereabouts. And look, and uh, it's going to take a serious effort to dislodge him. But I think Niall Rowe is like the is the common player, I think, in, in that Kilkenny defence. And that like yeah, like I think obviously David Blanchfield was probably the one that came through last year. I think there's a chance for in the full back line for this to happen too. Like particularly you see Porrick Walsh has stepped away. I know that Evan Cody was dropped from the squad as well. So um look, there's the corner they need, they're screaming out for cornerbacks. And look, Niall Rowe, he was he was the star defender on that under twenty side that won uh that won the All Ireland again, beating that really good Limerick side. He's been involved in the panel last year, played National Hurling League last year, uh, and he's been looked named to play in the Walsh Cup game anyway to start. He's like one of the key defenders already there too. So uh yeah, look, I think again, I think you'll see in the National Hurling League, I'd expect them to to play essentially every single game if like maybe miss one or two, but I think he's going to be an absolute consistent figure in that Kilkenny defence in the National League. And uh, 
yeah, again, in a in a position where I think he can really target Tommy Walsh for that starting spot in that corner role. And uh, look, they badly need competition in the full back line because they've had the same full back line for about three years, I'd say now. And look, I think Niall Rowe is uh, I think Niall Rowe is the obvious choice for who could actually take that role. Yeah, no, I'd be fairly confident in him as well. He's definitely going to rattle Tommy Walsh a bit and fight him for that position, which is what Kilkenny need, which is what every single team needs. Every single team wants that. Niall Rowe, another one to keep an eye on in 2024. Moving on to our top three, and I think all these three lads could have big impacts on the championship where it ends up in 2020, 2024. I nearly said 2023. That's how fast the time is moving. It is catching me out by surprise. We're going to start with a rebel. We're going to start with a Cork man, Ben Cunningham. This guy is a forward. He is massively, massively impressive. Consistent on the freeze as well. When you consider someone like Patrick Horgan is hitting the twilight of his career, Ben Cunningham could be a main man for Cork, not just next year, but for years to come. Yeah, absolutely. And like I think you sum up well there. Is that like... I think it's pretty certain to say that he is the next free taker for Cork when Pat Corgan does finish up that. Yeah, I think Corgan might have he'll have this year in the freeze and but like I think Cunningham's gonna be taking over him by next year. And uh like you see, I, he's just incredibly, incredibly impressive. Like he's he's everything that Cork need. I think he's an absolute complete forward. He has size, he's able to win his own ball clean, and then he's able to score obviously as well. I think he's most suited out around the half forward line, around centre half forward and uh yeah, no, look, I think he had he he was involved with the panel last year, played one or two league games. It was probably a year too soon for him, but he got that year of, of being in around, training away with the team. And look, I think I think he's gonna I think he'll play an awful lot in the league anyway, going forward. You'd like to see it anyway. And uh yeah, no, I think it will be really interesting how they manage him because I think when it comes to potential, he is he's the, the player for Cork in the forward line that has the most of it. And uh, yeah, I think he'll. I think he'll be a certainty in the team as well. It'll be interesting. He might not start year one for Cork, but like I think he'll definitely be a factor off the bench. And like you look at Cork, some nice players, but they struggle to win their own ball sometimes too. I think he's everything that they need. And uh, yeah, I just can't wait to see with this guy starting all the time because like you talk about um, like Adam Screeny, little the championship last year too. Ben Cunningham was absolutely dominant as a forward in there too, and. Yeah, look, just just what a year he had. So uh, he was absolutely influential to win, get them over the line. That's it. And like, look, the reality is, is the types of player now. I'm not saying they're as good as them, but I'm saying like uh, Adam Screeny reminds me of like an Eddie Brennan or a Lar Corbett in that the minute they get the ball, like there's a bit of a, what are they going to do? Um, ben Cunningham reminds me of like the own Kelly from Tipperary, Henry Shefflin type of player. That's like a robot. That's just like point, 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 point. Like that's just... Minimal fuss over the bar, and like that, he that type of clinicalness is will really, really help Cork in 2024, no doubt about it. And I'm buzzing to see his development into this Cork senior team for the next calendar year. Now, our next one is basically the Tom O'Callaghan equivalent in the hurling. It's a guy that has been earmarked for years, and he has been part of the Limerick panel since he was 18 years of age. But again, that Limerick half back line is just so damn good that it's quite hard to get in there. You've got Dermot Burns, Declan Hannon, Kyle Hayes, and then William O'Donoghue is able to play there. Garoad Hegarty is able to play there somehow. Like, there's so much competition there. Dan Morrissey as well. But could this be the year that we see Colin Coughlin break into that half-back line? The man from Bally Brown, he's been waiting patiently for his shot at the team. I'll be interested to see how they use him in the league. I'll be interested to see if he gets any championship minutes. But when we're talking about potential impact on the championship, Cahill O'Neill burst into the team over the last couple of years and was probably the difference in getting them over the line against Cork in the Munster Championship. So that's a big impact on the championship in general. That got Limerick the opportunity to get there four in a row. Could Colin Coughlin help Limerick to potentially do five in a row and make history? Yeah, look, because he, he differs a little bit from some of the players we have on the list is that everyone knows him. He's, he's kind of already established himself a little bit with Limerick. I would say that, like, the funny part of it last year was that I'd say when they weren't like they they were going well last year in the league, and I thought Colin Cochran was probably their form player in the league. And then just when the big guns come back, you kind of had to accept that he was back on the bench again a little bit. So like I think when he does go in, I think it's it's a, it's a sure thing that he's going to look really good in that team. Like we know 
when we've seen him play for Limerick before and he's been really, really good, that like when he does finally get the shot, you do know that he's already going to be one of the best halfback in, in like in the business. He's able to. The thing is, he's able to to contribute the scoreboard as well. For a fellow of his size, he's really quick too as well. So he's all the attributes. And like I think it's 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 an interesting one having up this high because like we don't know what the story with Kyle Hayes is. We don't know whether he'll be around. Like we don't know what 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 that is. I don't think anybody really knows what the situation is there too. And yeah, maybe Dan Morrissey will go out to halfback, but when they take Dan Morrissey out there, yeah, you have a really solid figure on the halfback line, but you lose a bit of the attacking flair. So uh, if you could potentially see that Dan Morrissey stays in the fullback position and then that they need somebody that can contribute to the scoreboard and do what Kyle Hayes does. And look, I think, yeah, obviously nobody's Kyle Hayes, but Colin Cochran's is about as close as, as you're going to get to him. So uh, like with a bit of uncertainty around Limerick and and who's going to be playing for them this year as well. I think it's, I think it's a really good call to have Colin Cochran up to the side. Yeah, no, I agree with every word you said there. I think he reminds me a lot of like the Darren Gleeson example. That Darren Gleeson patiently waited behind Brendan Cummins for years in the Tipperary team. And then when he finally got his crack, he actually won an All-Star himself in goal. I think in one of the first years that he was in the Tipperary side. So when they eventually break in, they're the best in the business. And Colin Coughlin definitely ticks those boxes. So it'll be interesting to see if 2024 will finally be a year where Limerick are forced to call upon him and he will be more than ready if they need to do that. Now, our number one, we mentioned about the Dacia having a pretty tough off-season. Powering Fitzgerald definitely can be a man to, to help them out. But one man who could potentially lead the charge is Patrick Fitzgerald. Not Porrig, Patrick, believe it or not. There are two of them. Patrick Fitzgerald has been absolutely sensational for Ballygunner now for the last few seasons. Even before he turned 18, by all accounts, he was good enough to play for the seniors, but obviously not allowed because he's not 18. Or he wasn't 18 at the time. Um, but now he's been firing for the last few years. And he, like he's emerged ready onto the team and especially he'd be watching key figures walk out the door like your Austin Gleeson, like your Shane McNulty, Connor Gleeson. And he might think, I'm going to grab this by the scruff of the neck and drag my Waterford team to results in 2024. If Waterford are going to get out of Munster, Patrick Fitzgerald needs to have a big year, in my opinion. Yeah, look, and last year, um, he was his minutes were definitely managed. And that, like I think a lot of people were maybe thinking that he might have made the jump last year. Uh, but like I think he was mostly a figure off the bench. But like even despite that, he really contributed on the scoreboard though as well. It wasn't like he was just coming on for a few minutes and just being uh, like a player with potential. He was contributing too. And then finally, when he got the championship opportunity to start against Tipperary, Waterford were already out. He delivered a really good performance and that played nearly all of the game as well. I think he scored three from play anyway as well and looked like every bit an intercounty player. I I think it's an absolute certainty that going in this year that I'd expect to see himself and Desi in the corner, maybe playing off Mikey Kiley. And uh yeah, I think I think Patrick Fitzgerald's gonna be like there's no doubt about it. When it comes to potential, I think he's gonna be I think he's the the, the corner forward with absolutely every attribute he's got unbelievable skill levels and unlike players maybe like Screeny and Keen Byrne he's got size too he's well able to mix it in that sense and uh, yeah I'd expect to see uh, I'd give him maybe a year or two and then I think himself and Owen Cody are going to be absolutely dominating the corner forward positions and uh, alongside Aaron Galan I think they're like I think these guys are just going to be running running the game for the next couple of years and uh, yeah just delivering huge scorelines all the time and this is the year that Patrick Fitzgerald is going to be moved from being the player with like really good potential to being uh, like one of the best inside forwards in the game. Yeah, well said. I agree with that. Now, before we wrap this up, we are going to. So, before we wrap this up, I agree with everything you said about Patrick Fitzgerald. We're going to give the other shouts to players who nearly made the list but just didn't quite, and then we'll wrap it up. So, Aidan O'Connor from Limerick has a big chance of featuring in 2024 as well. AJ Murphy from Dublin has been shooting the lights out for Nafina. Brian Saunderson from Cork could well be their goalkeeper going into 2024 as well. Keep an eye out for him. Connor O'Callaghan is another Cork player with huge potential. David Fogarty from Kilkenny featured prominently at wingback for O'Loughlin Gales throughout the club championship. Dermot O'Dooling from Dublin has massive potential as well. And Shane Meehan, as I said, from Clare is another worthy shout but those were our 10 players 
that we are keeping an eye on for the Hurling Championship in 2024, as well as the 10 Gaelic footballers that we are keeping an eye on in 2024. It's been a fun list. Look forward to looking back on it in a couple of years when all the players are either superstars or they've moved to a different country to work for the rest of their life. And I've never played Gaelic football or hurling again. But anyway, that's the line that we went with. Let me know or let us know in the comments if you agree or disagree with us and give us your tier list as well. Give us your top player to look out for in 2024. It's been a good, it's been a good video to do. Until the next one, guys, take care.